The White House now confirming China has had a spy base in Cuba since at least 2019 after a report in the Wall Street Journal last week that alluded to the fact that Cuba has agreed to host a secret Chinese spy base to eavesdrop on electronic communications across the southeastern United States. Here to talk more about it, retired U.S. Army Major General William Enyart. Uh, thank you for being here. So not a surprise. You know, to misquote uh, Captain Renault from the uh, great movie classic Casablanca, I'm shocked, shocked <laughs> that there's spying going on here. All right. Uh, it, this really shows uh, China's uh, desire and its, uh, and its ability to challenge us uh, globally. Uh, frankly, uh, it shouldn't come as a big surprise to anyone. Uh, I think the, the, the bigger surprise uh, is that uh, uh, China has taken this long to really start making these bigger moves. Uh, you know, Russia and the Soviet Union had a huge spy base in, in uh, Cuba, right, right outside Havana. Uh, which they wound up closing down in 2001, largely because they couldn't afford to operate it any longer. Uh, but they had hundreds of technicians there monitoring our, our radio communications, our electronic communications. So uh, Cuba, as long as we are an adversary with Cuba, is, is going to gladly host these folks. And, you know, while we're talking about that, frankly, our embargo, uh, our trade embargo on Cuba has been a miserable failure for 60 years. Uh, I was there in 2015 as part of a former members of Congress uh, visit, and the hotels, the restaurants, the clubs were full of Canadians and Europeans were all gladly spending uh, their tourist dollars in, in Cuba. Uh, and the tour buses, by the way, they were bright, shiny, brand new buses from China, not from Detroit, although Detroit's a whole lot closer than China is. So the only thing our embargo really has done is give trade opportunities to other countries. And we're not going to have a great impact on the, on the Cuban government with uh, so long as we have policies that date back to the Eisenhower administration uh, and that really have yet had an effect. So antiquated policies, how should U.S. strategy change now to meet the current threat? Well, I think what we have to do is engage with Cuba. Uh, we could start by uh, lifting the trade embargo, by developing a relationship there. You know, our, our relationship with Cuba has always been fraught uh, since the Spanish-American War of 1898, uh, when we first seized Guantanamo and, and have had our military base there ever since. Uh, so it, it's going to take time, uh, and it's going to take uh, building a different kind of relationship with the Cuban immigrant community here in the United States. Uh, which has had an outsized uh, impact on Cuban policy, uh, frankly, uh, much to the detriment uh, of, of American foreign policy. The U.S., though, also conducts spying missions near China. How is this any different? Well, I don't know, Marnie. Can you explain it to me? No. Uh, no, I, <laughs> seriously, it, it, uh, th that's exactly what the uh, Chinese believe. You know, they're not doing anything that we're not doing. Um, we've been... Uh, flying uh, reconnaissance planes uh, over uh, China and, and near the Chinese coast for, for decades. Uh, we'll certainly continue to do that. Uh, the, uh, so there's not really going to be any, any, uh, any change there. So they're doing that uh, in response. And uh, China has become a great power. It certainly, uh, uh, certainly has a global presence. And as such, they want to uh, keep an eye on what they view as the their great adversaries doing. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.